By the 1890s, Native Americans were forced almost entirely onto reservations in the American South, or sorry, in the American West. And they would create art with the materials that were on hand. In this case, they would get the discarded ledger paper and pencils from army clerks. Now, the ledger paper is accounting paper. And if any notation was made on it or an error was made, rather than erasing it, frequently they would simply get rid of the entire page. And that's what we see with these pieces. The colored pencils would equally come from those clerks. And the reason is they're very poor on the reservations. They don't have the artistic materials to get across or to... Uh, put out there their culture so to express their culture that's what I'm looking for so they're going to use the materials that they have on hand oftentimes what you're going to be looking at are drawings of personal exploits or tribal exploits in this case telling us not only what's going on this battle with the US Army but also who these people are uh, shown basically in pictograph form. So these will be personal exploits, these will be historical items, and they're often made either for themselves or ironically for American buyers who are going to buy them up rapidly. They also at times will react to their new home as well as create important visual documents of a time of upheaval and change. They're trying to record their history much like any other society would, but instead of using written word, they're trying to do so in visual terms. Now, in the West, we've done that for many, many millennia, going back to the Greeks, the Egyptians, etc., using hieroglyphics, using murals, using frescoes, using paintings, sculptures, etc. In this case, they're using the material that they have on hand. No different than the Greeks and the Romans. It just so happens that what they have on hand is ledger paper and colored pencil. And they don't have a tradition of European modeling, etc. So we see this depiction that looks a little different to us. Maybe a little primitive to many of you. But really, this is more a stylization than a lack of skill. The piece we're looking at is the honoring song at Painted Teepee. And this is from the Julian Scott ledger. What you're seeing here is a group of Kawa, a, sorry, a group of Kawa dancers performing before three teepees. And when we look at the teepees, you'll notice that they're all a little bit different. So on this one towards the front towards us, we see what appears to be an arm and a leg, and they are disjointed. That's what the circle means. So here we have a thigh and a leg and a forearm and hand, an upper arm. And that probably has something to do with what the warrior had accomplished. It's symbolic more than anything else. Here we have a series of five pipes. And those are very specific pipes. Those are made of pipe stone, uh, stone, sort of a very hard clay, soft stone that you find in Minnesota and the Dakotas. And could have a number of symbolic meanings, but these are basically status symbols for this tribal group. These status symbols indicate a warrior and possibly even a chief. The teepee further back shows something very different. Here we see a group of what appear to be people, and they have bird-like heads associated with them, with one who stands out as being red. What you might be looking at is a shaman's tent, where this is a vision that the shaman had, a depiction of the gods that he may have talked to in a shamanistic vision. And this could actually be a depiction of him amongst them, setting himself apart from the rest of these gods. Of course, a shaman is not a god, so it makes sense, and we see that in a lot of other traditions. Shamanism is very common, not just in the Americas, but in pretty much every society that has ever existed. The women are dancing in traditional clothing, uh, and here we see a mix of men and women depicted. 
Uh, the women are in traditional clothing in the center row, and then we see mixed men and women in the front and in the rear. We also get a depiction of that very colorful clothing that we talked about earlier, the different patterns being particularly visible at a distance. Now, ledger works, ledger paintings, will die out as resources allow for more beads and quill work. In fact, a lot of the work that we see that we associate with Native Americans today is not terribly Native American. It's actually very modern. Uh, modern ideas associated with the Native Americans. Their art forms would have been quite different, but we don't know entirely what they were because in part we see cultural destruction due to the American Indian Wars of the late 19th century, uh, as well as the wars and conflict that happened before that. We also have the pandemic that sweeps through. And the art that they would have created was frequently created of organic goods, things like leather, uh, where it's not going to survive very long in the elements. So unfortunately, the forms of art that we see today, such as beadwork, are probably not that related to what you would have seen had you been here in the 15th century or the 14th century and looked at Native American art. But these ledger paintings will be important for a couple of reasons. First of all, they capture the history of the people. Secondly, uh, these are particularly expensive. They're very collectible today because they are this very contemporaneous record of what's happening around them. And they're very influential on modern artists, modern Native American artists today, as we can see here. Uh, here using ledger paper in that traditional form, but modernizing it with a different style than what we would see in the ledger paintings. In this case, incorporating more three-dimensionality and modeling than what you would see in the more traditional form.